John Delacio here. This is what we're calling a unlisted program. It's only going out to special people. And I'll tell you how that works. When we do the unlisted, I have what I call unlisted. These are the closest friends and partners and members to me. And it's when I want to tell them something that I don't want to tell everybody else for several reasons. One, it might confuse other people. Number two, it might not be none of their business or they might just not understand. It's unlisted. So it only is seen by the people I send it to or the people you send it to. So remember, it was private in the first place for a reason. So be very careful who you send it to. If you're not sure, ask me. If you have a friend that you think needs the information we're sharing and you're not sure if you should send it to them, you have my number, text me or email me. And this way, there's no confusion. But it's mainly for my closest friends and partners. Now, we did another video about the subject a few weeks ago, but some things have changed since then, so I need to bring you update, relay, communicate, activate. We're going to take the state and nations for the glory of God. So, there we are. On the screen, you're seeing a picture of our home. Jennifer and I and Abigail and Emily live in that home. It's not a big fancy home, but it's a very nice home. We bought that house brand new. Nobody else lived in it about four years ago. So we have Jennifer, myself, Emily, Abigail, Rocky is our dog, two cats, and a guinea pig. <laughs> we all live there in harmony, and the peace of God is in that house. Now you see in that house how it was at Christmas time. And by the grace of God, it will look like that again. We have out in the front, Jesus is the reason for the season. We have Merry Christmas, and we have God bless America. Now, you see in the other picture again of the house without the de decoration. We love that house. The peace of God is there. The cats, the guinea pig, the dog, the kids, are all in harmony. But the enemy is trying to take my house away. And that's why I wanted to come to tell you and bring an update uh, on what happened. Our mortgage company is trying to snooker us. Oh, by the way, we have some nice people in the room. Other people might be coming in. You guys make sure when they come in, let them know we're recording. We're gonna continue the teaching here after I would do this, but I wanted to come early and update with you, tell you what's happening. We have also people listening by phone. And we have some of our people on vacation in Arizona, some people in Tennessee, and we have some people that couldn't be here, but they're part of us and they wanted to know what's going on. So they're listening by phone. We are not Zooming the teaching series we're doing because it's going to be part of the DVD set that we're making that by the grace of God will go around the world. But here's what happened. Our budget, I told you at the end of August, our budget for September, we're doing pretty good. We have really came through a really good time of healing and restoration from the crazy things that happened. But at the end of August, so our budget for, for September was doing pretty good. It was about 20000 so about $20,000. But because of something else that happened with the house, we need another $22,000. We were snookered, but not completely. Our mortgage company tried to snooker us and a lot of other people. To snooker, and my de definition is, when somebody, even yourself, tries to abort a vision, a dream, a purpose, something that you're doing, 
and snooker means to try to stop it from happening. Well, our mortgage company, I am very, very, very upset about. But before I tell you why we have a $22,000 need is to save the house, I have to tell you, I have to tell you why, how that happened. We're going along real good. Everything in the ministry is getting restored. I wasn't able to travel because of health reasons. In fact, we had people pass away in New Jersey. I couldn't even go to the funeral. I need to, needed to, right now I need to stay close to my awesome doctors because of some heart issues, uh, aneurysm, and some spine problems. And I just had back surgery. It was not a lot of fun to have the back surgery because they had to cut the bone. But now in October, they're gonna do neck surgery. And I, I don't like that, what they showed me. We met with the doctor the day before yesterday, the surgeon. They go in, they cut the bone, try to relieve the spinal cord. Then they put a cushion in there and then they screw it together. And I'm not looking forward to it. And I'm gonna to have to wear this ugly bracelet for a while. So I'm trying to get this DVD series finished before I have to wear that ugly brace. But I, because of a lot of things, I couldn't travel to other churches and ministries. And some of you are watching this in Minnesota and North Dakota and Indiana and all over the country. And I haven't been able to go to your churches and minister because I wasn't able to travel. Well, traveling and receiving offerings on the road for our ministry was 60% of the income. Well, that affected us. So we were able to get this house through a VA loan, I'm a vet, and it's one of the things that happened with my back was in the military, but try not to get sidetracked. So it did affect our income. So we got the house, I think, at a good deal. It's in a community, a development, where we needed to be so the kids could be in a particular school zone. And because Jennifer's mother was ill and she lived in the same community, so she wanted to be there to be close to the mother. The mother passed away since then, but now she has the father uh, that she's helping. So we needed to be in that community. We got the house. The, when we bought the house, the house was 235000 According to our mortgage company right now, we ha it's worth four hundred. We This is the mortgage company's appraisal. According to them, it's worth 400000 They say we have $170,000 equity in the house, and they're trying to steal it from me. And we ain't going to let them do that, are we? So I might be looking this way and that way once in a while, but I'm basically talking uh, to our friends out there in other towns and state. So everything's going along fine. Our mortgage payment was affordable. It was less than 1200 a month mortgage, and we got it at a 3% interest. So we're very happy with it. But I couldn't travel. Then the virus hit. The virus really affected us. It affected us. We couldn't have services. We had several thrift stores. The stores were closed, but we still had to pay rent. Then we lost our leases on some of the locations. We moved a lot of stuff for storage at a ranch. We rent space at a horse ranch. Two hurricanes came, did a lot of damage. Of course, it's a lot of expense. We got it repaired and then this year we had another hurricane that caused more damage. So things, basically thing happened. But because of the virus, it really hurt us, our ministry a lot financially. Well, I'm the pastor, Jennifer's the secretary, and we couldn't get a salary because it wasn't there. People were locked in. I got the virus, I got deathly sick for six months from the virus. Some days I didn't know if I was gonna make it or not, but God's not finished with me, so here we are. So all of that happened and it did affect us. 
but the nice mortgage company. Watch out for people who talk real nice. The mortgage company send us a letter and also by phone. And here's what they say. Oh, there was stimulus money. Remember the stimulus money that was going out? And they were giving, the government was helping some churches and some businesses. Well, we tried to get the stimulus money to help the ministry. And they would not give us the stimulus money. You know why, right? This is what they told me. We didn't qualify for the stimulus money. The reason was because the pastor doesn't get a salary. So they were giving it to churches and businesses where they were getting salaries, but we couldn't get it because I didn't get a salary. Well, I didn't get a salary because the church was hurting. But we get a phone call and a letter from a mortgage company. And here's what they said. If you have been affected by the virus, we're, <laughs> I don't even, those words, I can't even say those words without the crying or laughing anymore. Here's what they said. If you've been affected by the virus, are you ready for that? <laughs> it was such a lie, I have a hard time saying it. If you were affected by the virus, we're here to help. I thought, well, maybe they are because the government was giving away money like they had it. <laughs> they just printed some more. So I we called them. I said, Jennifer, let's see what they said. So Jennifer and I called the mortgage company and we said, we got a notice saying if you've been affected by the virus or, oh, the, or the economy is bad and, and everything. We're here to help. I said, well, how can you help? They said, we're going to defer your mortgage payments. And they led us to believe they were putting the mortgage payments on the end of the mortgage. I said, really? I said, for how long? They said, the most we could do it is one year. I said, let me see if I understand this. I can laugh about it now because I cried for three weeks. I said, well, let me go. you're going to take our mortgage payment and put it at the end. And they led us to believe that's what they were doing. But they could only do it for one year. I said, well, Jennifer, if we don't have to make our mortgage payment for a year or six months, we could pay some other bills and get back on our feet again. So we did it, and we communicated with them monthly, sometimes bi-monthly, sometimes weekly, and everything is fine. We got letters from them at least three, at least three times a week. And every time I said to them, are we on track now? Oh, yeah. I said, I want to tell you something. We have just went through a lot. I don't want any bad surprises. Do not send me a big bill that I cannot afford to pay and leave us stuck. And here's what they said. Oh, no. <laughs> I laugh at them now because they're so full of baloney. They said, oh, no. We want to do that. We are here to help. Every single time they said that, they were very trained. Oh, no, we wouldn't do that. We're here to help. Well, the year goes by, and it did help us, because instead of paying 1200 a month for the mortgage, we could pay some other bills for the, to help the church out. Year goes by. I called the mom. I said, what do we do now? I said, we want to start making payments. Well, no, you don't have to make any payments now. I said, are you serious? Yep. I said, uh, why? Well, it's a plan that we have for people who's been hurt by the virus or in your particular situation, and you qualify for us to do a reorganization of the mortgage. I think that's what they call it. Is that right, John? Remodification of the mortgage. I says, what does that mean? Well, as you know, your payments were deferred, so we're going to do a modification of the mortgage. And we want you to send us all your information, your income, your outcome, your out and everything else. 
and we'll give it to the underwriters and we're going to modify your mortgage so that it'll be easier for you. I said, wow, this is amazing. I said, but we want to make the payments. No, you can't make any payments yet while we're in this process. I said, let me tell you something. We have been through a lot. Our family, church, and ministry could not handle any shocking thing. We just went through the virus. We lost our leases. I had health issues. And we had three hurricanes. I don't want any more bad surprises. Oh, no, they said. We wouldn't do that. We are here to help. I said, listen, I, I said, listen, if I don't have to make any payments right now, it would help us. But don't surprise me later on with a big balloon payment or something. Oh, no. About three times a week, a weekly, 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 three times a week, we got a letter from them. Everything's okay. You gave us all the information. And they always want the more information, more information, more information. It's on your writer. Everything's on target. Don't worry. At least a couple times a month, I called them. I don't want no bad surprises. We could not handle it. Oh no, we want to do that. So we go on. About, about 12 months into the program, they tell me that there is a government plan, because I'm of debt, that the VA would help us with our mortgage because of the virus and things that were going on with the economy. I said, really? Guess what? The plan that we could have qualified for, it was canceled, ended a month before they told me. They knew I could have qualified for a plan and got some government help and they didn't tell me about that plan until it had expired and they're acting like they were trying to help me. Well, things go on. We had to borrow some money. We maxed out our credit cards trying to get through the things that we went through. And then about three weeks ago, maybe four, about the third week in August, we got a text. Oh, my phone's back there because people listen, different people listen by phone. If those of you listen by phone, we love you. All right. Now, I get a text, and it said, contact our collections department. I said, Jennifer, what's this about? I call them up. They give you all the information. Okay, we'll look up your account. Okay, we have it right here. I said, well, I'm calling because I got a notice to contact our collections department. What is that about? They said, yes, you did not qualify for the modification. I said, what does that mean? Well, that means you have to get your mortgage payment current. I said, I'm willing to send you some payments. We can make some payments. No, you cannot make any payments until you get it current. Why is it not current? Well, it's not current because you wouldn't let us make any payments. You told us not to make no payments. That's why it's not current. I said, okay. Now listen to this. This is really a shocker. I says, why did they not approve the modification? And you know what they said? They said, because, <laughs> I can't even believe, they said, because you didn't make the payments. I said, you're kidding me. I thought if you had a half a brain, you'd be the genius of your family. We didn't make payments because you wouldn't let us make payments. And now you're telling us we don't qualify for the modification because we missed payments. Oh, yes, if you miss payments, you don't qualify for a reorganization or modification. I said, but you told us not to. So I talked to every hierarchy that I could from our mortgage company 
and I argued and argued with them that they need to keep the deal that they led us to believe. They want to go along. So you know what they did? They changed the reason. And here's the new reason. Well, the other reason, now this was after talking to a bunch of them. They came up with this reason. They said, well, the other reason is that we, we're not sure that you would be able to make the mortgage payments at the current interest rate. I said, excuse me? I told you from the beginning, do not do anything or let me do anything that will let me lose my 3% interest and the deal that I have. I asked you not to do that. And they said, well, you know, things have changed. The economy is bad and the uh, interest rates are higher now. I said, I have a 3% fixed interest. I'm not going to lose it. I don't want to lose that. Well, if we did the modification, you would have to go by the new interest rates. If they do the new interest rates, my mortgage payments would double at the interest rates they are now. And it looks like they're probably going to get worse. I was livid. I said, well, let me make payments. I don't want to lose this deal. You cannot make payments. And this was there to several people. I mean, I fought with everybody up there. I even got an attorney, but I'll get to that in a minute. They said, you cannot make any payments until you pay the back balance, which now they want to 22,000. That was including September's payment. I said, I don't have 22,000. You know what we've been through. You knew that. And so, I said, I can't do that. And I said, I do not want to pay double for the same house. And they told me again that the house was valued at 400000 and we paid two thirty five, dollars but now it was valued at 400000 their numbers, and we have $179,000 equity in. Is that right? Okay. So I said, well, what's the deal here? You won't let me back. They said, if you send $1 or one month or 10000 the computer is going to kick it back to you. Can't do that. I says, well, what's my options? And they said, here's your options. Get it current by paying the 22000 If you can't do that, we want to have a short loan. You know what short loan means? I get nothing. I lose the equity in the house. But not only that, we don't want to move. We have two special needs children. Our church office is now working out of the house. The garage in the attic is full with storage stuff from the church. We got the wonderful dog, the two cats, the guinea pig, and nobody wants to move. And we need to stay in the school zone and next near Jennifer's father. I don't want to move. We don't want to sell the house. If we uproot it right now, it would set our family and ministry back years. If we got the equity out of the house, it would be gone. We, no, I would have to pay more for renting an apartment than my mortgage payment. I don't want to do that. So I said, what's the other option? Now get this. We have it in writing. Our third choice was to sign the house over to them. Are they nuts? So I talked to several realtors. Yeah, they're nuts. So I talked to several realtors and several attorneys. And they said, this is what's happening. A lot of mortgage companies are doing this now because they're trying to get people to pay the new mortgage rate of almost 8%. And they said that they know that most people don't want to do that, but they play on people's emotions. Some people can't move because of the reasons I explained. They don't want to move because of the reasons that I just said. But because they have an emotional tie to the house, they pay the money anyway. And they said the people who don't pay it, they foreclose on the house. So the attorney that we have right now, who's, who I really, really, really like, 
This is his specialty. He said, Pastor John, here's the situation. You have to stop them from foreclose. They want to foreclose. Just so you know, we have a deadline, and that's why I'm doing this now. We got an email from them today and talked to them on the phone today. They are giving me till October the 10th. And then if we don't do something by this, uh, October the 10th, they're going to start foreclosure proceedings. He said, here's the deal. I have four clients right now from that same mortgage company, but they are already in foreclosure. They're already foreclosing on them. He said, you could probably fight this because they led you to believe something else. But here's the situation. A judge will not even look at the case until it's in foreclosure. So we would have to let them foreclose and then go fight it in court. And he said, Pastor John, it's going to cost you a fortune to do that. The best thing you could do, get it current. Get it current. Keep the 3% interest. Keep your payments under 1200 a month. Get your credit straight, and then when the entry rates change, if you want, then you can refinance and take some equity out of the house, get your wife a car, get a boat, go fishing. And we want the boat to do our television program. So that's where we stand. And that's why I'm coming here today, because uh, about two weeks ago, I sent you another video explaining more, but I only sent it to a few people. And the people that I sent it to are very, they love us. But a few of them offered to do something, but the way they offer to do something is make pledges that they want to help us by doing so much a year for the next, 12, so much a month for the next 12 months. We do that a lot. Tides offering vows and pledges, so they made pledges. The problem is I don't have a year. So if any of you that made pledges we need you to do the pay as much as you can on the pledge now. Right now, we're recording this around the 15th. Is this the 15th of September? I think this is the 15th of September, Friday night. I need you to pay what you can now and then text me or email me and just say, Pastor John, this is what I'm doing now. And there's a Cash App address on the screen. You could sell by Cash App. Or there's our PayPal address on the screen. But we really don't have time for the mail. If you, if you want to send it by mail, I'll give you a special address to send it to. But if you want to send a check by mail, but we really don't have time. The, the, the mail, ever since the virus, the mail here, Paul Revere got there faster. So the Pony Express got there faster. But Wells Fargo, too. We have a Wells Fargo account. You can get our bank account number. You can make a direct deposit into Wells Fargo, or you can so by Zelle. You know that we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Whatever offerings or gifts you give will be tax deductible for you according to IRS codes. That might help you or encourage you a little bit more, but we don't have time. From what they told us today, we got to October 10th. I don't want to wait till October 10th. 10th. I don't like the last minute. I want to have the 22,000 by October the 5th. And the 22,000, I want to include October mortgage payment. And then I want to stick it up their nose. I really am so upset with them. It is so wrong what they did and they put us in a very so here's what we need we need September's mortgage for the ministry and in addition to that we need 22,000 to save the house they won't take a payment they won't take a payment they won't take half of them or they won't take 10,000 they want the whole thing they're trying to push us in to foreclosure now I have been through legal means, I have been dragging our feet until we can get the money in. And 
I'm dragging off me. Because of legal matters, I'm the reason, and our attorney's advice is the reason that we got to October the 10th. But after that, they're going to file foreclosure. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to sell the house. I don't want to move. We went through a horrible thing. It would be a big setback for the kids. The dog won't know what to do. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't do that. We can't. We can't do it. So our out-of-state friends that are watching this in Wisconsin, Indiana, North Dakota, other states, talk, some of you are pastors. Briefly consider sending an offering. We've always had a great month. October has always been one of our best months. Perhaps you pastors can receive a special uh, offering for our ministry. We've done it for all of you. Every place that I went, in your churches, I was a tremendous blessing. It needs to come back home now. And those of you where we've been in your churches, talk to your, your pastors. See if you have a benevolence fund that you could help. So you spelled thousand, M-I. If 40 people, that's our budget for, for September. If 40 people gave a thousand or five people gave 5,000 or people gave 2,500, whatever. Nothing is too small or too large. Wouldn't it be a shame if we had more than enough? Wouldn't that be a blessing? Well, God is more than enough, and he's not going to let this happen. We did nothing wrong. We did everything they told us to do. But we can't even go to court until they did that. And the attorney said, Try, it's going to cost you a fortune if you have to do that. We don't want to do that. And it would confuse a lot of people, you know, how people talk. The lace here is in I don't want to go down that road. We can't. So, again, if God's touching, and please, if you're going to share this, to some, if you know some, hey, in all the moving that we did, losing our leases, I, we lost contact with people. But if you know somebody who's been touched by this ministry, and you know they, that they love us, and if you believe they would like their help if they knew about it, fine, send it to them. But don't send it to people who just want to gossip and spread rumors. We, we have enough fires to put out. You spelled thousand, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. Kathy, you're gonna help me bring a chair over here. This is Kathy. Slide a chair over here. She didn't know you're gonna do this. Kathy is from Haiti. She's been part of our ministry since 1997. What does a little ant look like when he dies? <laughs> <laughs> you got to do a little more enthusiastic. Let me say, you're a dead end. There. All right, she's going to help me. I'll tell you a cool story. Guy went golfing. It wasn't very good. So here's the golf ball. He hits the ball, Kathy. It landed on an anthill. But now he's going to make the next shot. He thinks he's real good. So I'm a fisherman, not a golfer. And he swings, and guess what he did? He missed the ball, but he killed 100 ants. Come on, <laughs> there they are. There's 100 dead ants all over the place. So if you don't succeed at first, what do you do? Try again. So here it goes, he swings again. Boom, he misses the ball, he kills another 100 ants. <laughs> He killed another hundred ants, okay? It's just not embarrassing, are you? You're blushing a little bit. It's okay. So if you don't succeed at first, what do you do? He tries again. He kills another hundred ants, and the ball is still there. If you don't succeed at first, what do you do? There's hundreds of, come on, there's hundreds of dead ants all over the place. Now, it turns out there's only two ants left, me and you. There's only two ants left, me and you. What do you think the one ant said to the other ant? I'm not gonna go first. Do you wanna know? 
if we're going to make it, we better get on the ball. So, friends, if we're going to make it and take care of this thing, we better get on the ball. So October the 5th is going to come around here before we know it, and that's in addition to September's uh, budget. Now, on the screen, you're saying a postal post box office or uh, address. I don't have time for you to send it to them. If you want to send a generous offering to the post office, to the mail, I'll give you a different address. Text me or email me. That's my email address on the screen. And, uh, but you can go to Wells Fargo and deposit in our account. If you want to do that, text me, call me, email me. I'll give you the uh, one of the church's account. Or you can use Zeal. And there's a cash app address or PayPal address. Are we going to get this done? Yeah. All right. I want to read a scripture and close with it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. It's the scripture that I, long before 97, before I met you, I was said, You want to read it? It's on the screen. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man do it, the same he shall receive of the Lord. So what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. So uh, those of you, you know, when I went to your churches in your town, we were a blessing. We were a tremendous blessing. So if your church has a benevolence fund or can receive an offering, it will help. But I know this, everybody could do something. If you're watching this, it's because you've been blessed by, by this ministry. You've seen the fruit of the ministry. 45 years now. I'm now doing this in this for 40, 45 years. Have you learned anything from this ministry? Tell me something you've learned from this ministry. Prosperity. You've learned prosperity? Yes. Are you sister prosperity? Kathy came from Haiti, and she was working at Disney World at the time, and she came into a 30, Thursday night service, and we were receiving pledges to buy television equipment. We spent over a million dollars on television and equipment, over a million dollars helping disaster victims, hurricane and tornado victims. and. Over a million dollars traveling, where did it come from? Give and it shall be given unto you. So, but we got more to do. We want to finish the DVD series we're working on. We need a building and uh, we got to get this pressure off of us. Uh, we, we really got to get the pressure off. So let's get it caught up, make the payments, pray for the economy to change. In a year or two, we'll decide if we want to remortgage and take some equity out or not. I don't know. All right, we love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the people. Thank you for hearing my heart. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Lord, we pray for the partners, the tithers. You protect what they have. The offering above the tithe, Lord, brings increase. Vows and pledges, you protect us from evil spirits, evil people. We could call on you in a day of trouble and we deliver. I believe in it. I made a $4,000. We need 40000 So I made a $4,000 pledge. The tithe, I pledge, I'm pledging or the tithe. I'm pledging 4000 tithe on the 40000 I have learned I could sow my way out of any problem. You got a need? Sow a seed. All right, thank you for hearing my heart. Uh, people are coming in, and we're going to do part 11 of the DVD series. All right, we're out of time. Thank you. Did you have fun? Yes. All right, we love you.